Hey everyone, so I was actually going to make this a Cafe Astro Athens video because I actually just poured um, a glass of cold brew um, through Copper Moon Coffee, which you guys might know um, is my sponsor for Cafe Astro Athens. Um, and I mean, their coffee is like really awesome. Um, but I decided I wanted this to be a little bit more conversational because we're going to be chatting a lot about black holes and this crazy visualization that I shared recently um, on all my social media channels. So I decided, you know what, rather than going into the character I usually do for Cafe Astro Athens, I was like, let me just do a random video. So what I wanted to share with you guys, um, I'm gonna first play that visualization for you. So this is what it looks like. And um, I added some like crazy music to it and stuff like that. Um, for like Instagram purposes, I thought it was fun, but it actually was just posted on astronomy picture of the day recently and um, I, There were just so many questions about it that I was like, let me just break it down in a video for everyone So I did through TikTok, but TikTok's like very limited to your time So I had to break it up in like seven videos and you know, not everyone saw the videos And so there's a lot of missing information. So I decided I would make one full concise video for you guys um, With my whiteboard for here on YouTube. So what you're seeing in this like computer graphic visualization and the reason I call it that rather than a simulation is it is a simulation but it's more so to sort of visualize what happens around a black hole. So from my understanding when I studied this this image this video is um, it's not modeled after any specific black holes it's more of just a generalized kind of breakdown of um, what goes on at a black hole and around a black hole. So um, you guys see a lot of like orange swirls. So I'm gonna go ahead and start drawing it out for you guys. Let's see if this is, yeah, it's a good angle. So um, what you have first is the like big round, like circular, like black sphere. And we would think that that's the black hole, but alas, it is not. The black hole is actually right about where I stopped shading it in. That's about where say the, exterior of the white area is actually the event horizon event horizon and the event horizon is usually referred to as the point of no return and that's because its escape velocity is equal to the speed of light so what that means uh, first off the speed of light we're going to be using metric units for this is 300 million meters per second and um, I randomly just did this on TikTok and realized it actually is a pretty interesting way to help people understand what exactly that means. Um, if you were to go up to your door, right where your doorknob is located is about one meter. So the speed of light is able to travel 300 million of those like doorknob heights in one second. That is the speed of light. And so the event horizon is where the escape velocity so what is the escape velocity? So the velocity, the speed in which it's moving, where it can actually escape the gravitational pull of the black hole. The black hole is pulling on it, but there's a certain speed in which it needs to reach where it can still escape that gravitational pull, but the event horizon is where that speed is equal to the speed of light. And so that is actually where the black hole begins. That is right where the black hole, where you fall in and you become spaghettified, um, which is a scientific term. You guys might have heard of it before. It's pretty funny. Spaghettification. And that's when you start to get torn apart, being pulled into the black hole, being pulled in opposite directions. It's really grotesque. But um, what you see in this video graphic is this exterior area. So you, you don't even see the white area. It's just like the whole thing is dark. And that is the shadow of the black hole. So that area is, it's about two times the size of the black hole itself. So whatever the size of the black hole is, it would be about like two times going outward. Um, so I guess I could draw that out in pink. So whatever the size of the black hole is, the shadow extends uh, about two times the length of it. Um, you guys can't really see that, but um, that is where the shadow is. Then something interesting starts to happen that you see. You see this area, I'm gonna use orange for it, 
that it looks like a very thin ring. So this is referred to as the photon ring or also the photon sphere. And the photon sphere, let me go ahead and write that down. Photon ring or sphere. I've heard it actually both ways. That is where there are photons, which is what makes up light, um, that is orbiting around the black hole. So there are certain parts of the black hole where it is specifically just um, gas and dust. There are some areas where it is light being emitted from the matter that's falling in. And so most likely this area where the photon ring is, um, although I have gotten questions on TikTok saying how could photons be orbiting around the black hole if they're, if they're massless? Also, how could their light get bent if they're massless? Like that makes no sense. Well, what this is, is these photons are light that have been reflected or, or um, re like, um, emitted, excuse me, emitted from the mass that's falling into the black hole. A lot of this mass is, is glowing. A lot of it is illuminated, um, whether it's dusty gaseous material or it's like stardust or stars, um, it emits light. A lot of it is glowing light and that's how astronomers are able to even see the black hole is because what's around it is actually glowing. And so this photon ring is just that. Then you go further out and you start to see around here in this visualization, I'm just gonna kind of draw over the words. Yeah, you could still see it pretty well. Um, you start to see kind of this like curve up here. Um, and then you're kind of seeing it sort of go out like this and around and kind of bending inward, this whole area. So what this is, this entire thing is the accretion disk. This, all this glowing matter that's around here. But the matter and the dust and gas that's in the accretion disk is moving differently depending on where it's located from what we see. This is where gravitational lensing comes in. So some areas, say we're down here. So actually, I'll draw it up there instead. I'm gonna use the blue marker because Earth is predominantly blue because of the water. So we'll say this is Earth. So what if we were to look directly at the black hole, we might see the matter around here kind of acting normally, just matter that's, that's orbiting around the black hole, dust and gas. But what's over here, this light, we get the orange marker again, the matter that's moving around here that is like, has like reflected light, as we're trying to see that, the light is, is being sent to Earth, it's being warped by that gravity. Gravitational lensing is the bending of light in space due to a body of mass that has gravity. So on Earth, we bend light, like in my glasses, for instance, it bends light a specific way so that I'm able to see things a little bit differently. Um, but in space, light is being bent due to bodies of mass, galaxies, um, planets, other, other massive objects, and even black holes, because they're a huge body of mass. So this light that would be on this end would actually to us look more like it's maybe over here. Yeah, so it would look more like it's over here or over here. And this is why um, there's certain techniques that are used in um, astronomy such as um, it was like flux luminosity is what I was working on, which is like the changing in brightness. Um, and then also being able to like calculate in that difference based on like right ascension and declination, which would be like moving this way versus moving that way. And there are certain areas that we have to really kind of be conscious of depending on what that body of mass is. And depending on how big it is, most likely we can actually calculate how much that light is being bent and then compromise for that difference. Something else that astronomers look at to try and figure out where exactly that light is coming from is to take the object's parallax. So that would be looking at kind of like a triangle. It would look at this, it would look at where the black hole is, and then it would look at that. And depending on the size and the mass of that black hole and where it's located, it would essentially be able to calculate an angle here and an angle there and then figure out where exactly that light is coming from. So this looks a little bit messy. I'm going to clean this up and erase it and then continue with 
this visualization. So I cleaned it up just a little bit. So there's that black hole um, right in the middle, the event horizon and the shadow of the black hole. Then we have that photon sphere or photon ring. And then we have the accretion disk and the matter from the accretion disk being warped based on um, that mass of the black hole. So it's actually gravitational lensing. It looks like it's being warped, um, but it's really not. The light looks like it's being bent. And so, and then we'll just go across here too, because we have the matter in the accretion disk that's orbiting this way across the black hole. And then the matter that's behind it that looks like it's being warped or being bent. And that's gravitational lensing. That's due to the gravitational force of the black hole. And so this accretion disk is mainly made up of, um, like I mentioned earlier, dust and gases, very like dense, dense gas. Um, a lot of accumulation that's come in from either the out parts of the galaxy. If this is a supermassive black hole, it could be orbiting in the middle of the galaxy. Um, if it's like somewhere out in space, it might even collide with another black hole. It might be part of a black hole merger and it could be two black holes that have now formed into one. So many cool things about black holes. But what you see up here, this is the upper end of the accretion disk. This is the under end. And like I mentioned, these two areas um, are what's being warped visually, optically, um, by the black hole. And so the light that would travel to us from our viewpoint would look like it's being bent due to that gravity of the black hole. Something else to keep in mind is all of this is, a lot of it is being pulled in by the gravity of the black hole. Um, so a lot of times, depending on how, if the, if the black hole keeps being getting fed, so meaning if more matter keeps falling in, it's going to become more gravitationally powerful. It's going to become bigger. It's going to become more massive. And so it's going to be able to pull stronger. And so that escape velocity is going to, you know, still be like the event horizon. Once it reaches the speed of light, the point of no return, but a lot of times matter is going to keep falling in, falling in, falling in, and you know, the secretion disk um, can just end up growing to be denser because more matter, dust, gas, other stuff from out in the universe could all start to accumulate and fall into the black hole. Now there are other regions like the innermost ring or the innermost area of the accretion disk where it's pretty much a safety zone. So in that area, um, I don't know exactly where the calculated value is of it. It varies uh, from my presumption, depending on the mass of the black hole. Um, but if any of you guys know where the innermost um, area of the accretion disk is, definitely let me know. Um, I was doing quite a bit of uh, studying and research on that, trying to figure out where it was. My specialty was not in black holes. It was in planetary disk formation. So early solar systems. And um, this stuff is just awesome. But um, there's an area where hypothetically, if we were to get a spaceship that can um, orbit around a black hole and not fall in, be maybe in this safety zone, say Bob or Alice, the good, good old go-to names for, um, for uh, astrophysics demos, that possibly they can orbit around that black hole. And this is now where we go into kind of those crazy theories and ideas of like, what if we were to try and power a spaceship by orbiting around a black hole? Because there's a lot of energy there. And because of that gravitational pull of the black hole, it might be able to even add to the power of the spaceship and slingshot us out into space somewhere, make us move a lot faster. We could pick up that, that velocity and maybe get slung out, swung out. Um, but you know, it hasn't been done, so we don't really know. But we look at Jupiter, for instance, and Jupiter does something known as the slingshot effect with the asteroids in the asteroid belt, which is located between Mars and Jupiter. And a lot of times an asteroid um, that will end up t flying towards the inner solar system, so visiting us over here on Earth, can get flung out due to that gravitational force of Jupiter. And so it's a slingshot effect and it throws the, the asteroid off its trajectory um, and it ends up flinging it towards the inner solar system. And so if you were to maybe apply that concept with the spaceship, it might be possible, um, but of course we'd have to build technology to even get to the black hole in the first place to be able to travel all the way to the inner galaxy. Um, but you know, it's not too far-fetched. It's just a matter of actually building up that technology to do it.
So um, that's about it with the visualization that we saw of the black hole. Even that innermost area wasn't even covered in the black hole visualization, but I just kind of read that up on um, like separately. And my mentor in college, um, he's a cosmologist. And so um, I was learning a bit about like black holes, galaxy collisions, that fun jazz, um, but definitely went more into studying protoplanetary disks. And um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you guys because um, I think it's just really cool and it's a really awesome visualization. And the importance of having models like that and having computer graphics um, really helps aid in discovering new things within our own universe. Going to places that we can't actually physically go to and the computer models allow for us to see that. So it's really awesome. Um, this was a super long video. This is why I'm making it part of the original series. And um, my hair is super short. I cut it. <laughs> so anyone who knows me on here, um, Surprise! <laughs> Super short hair. Um, so anyway, all right, I hope that you guys have an awesome September. And if you guys haven't subscribed yet for my newsletter on astroathens.com, I now send out a monthly transmission, very Star Trek-y, um, where I get to share with you guys um, all the different like things you could see in the night sky, um, different like days in, in astronomy history, when space missions were launched, when astronomy objects were discovered, um, astronomical objects were discovered, and um, also I re recently just gave out a bunch of recommendations of my favorite like stargazing apps and like launch apps and space apps, and I'm working on um, the status of recent missions as well, and um, yeah, a bunch of awesome, really cool things. So if you guys want to sign up for that, it's on astroathens.com. And yeah, thank you guys for being here and for subscribing and watching this video. I will chat with you guys in the future. Um, all right, be well. Bye. Then you notice this ring right around here that's bending like this. Now this right here is known as Doppler beaming. There's some regions that are brighter, and that's the illuminated glowing matter that's orbiting towards us, and the other ones that's moving away from us. Kind of like a Doppler shift. That's why it's called Doppler beaming.